Hello there, my name's Sarah. I'm 27, and I've been working as a nurse for a while. My life has been a whirlwind of hospital shifts, patient checkups, and endless cups of coffee. The hospital corridors have been my world, and my social life? Well, that's been on life support for a while now. So, what's a girl to do when she's got no time to meet people the old-fashioned way? She goes online. I signed up for this dating site, nothing fancy, just one of those places where you hope to find someone who's not a complete weirdo. That's where I bumped into Ryan, virtually of course. His profile was plain, no show-off stuff. Just a guy with a genuine smile and a twinkle in his eyes. We started trading messages, and something clicked. We decided to meet up, see if this online chemistry had any basis in the real world. Our first date was at this cozy little cafe, downtown. I walked in, and there he was, waiting for me. Hey Sarah, you made it, he greeted, his face lighting up like a kid on Christmas morning. I was a bundle of nerves, but his easygoing nature calmed me down. We started chatting, just casual stuff at first. He was a software engineer, loved messing around with codes and all that. He was passionate about his work, but when he spoke about his mother, Margaret, his demeanor changed. I'm all she's got, you know, he said, his voice dropping a bit. My old man skipped out on us when I was just a kid. She's been alone since then. I try to help out, send her a grand every month. Ain't much, but it keeps her going. I admired his dedication, his sense of responsibility. I shared my own stories, about the grueling hours at the hospital, the emotional roller coaster that my job often was. He listened, really listened, not just nodding along. His eyes were full of understanding, and I felt a connection. As the weeks rolled by, I found myself falling for this guy. He was different, caring and attentive. He'd show up at the hospital when I was pulling late-night shifts, always with a hot meal in tow. He was a breath of fresh air in my otherwise monotonous life. One evening, while we were having dinner at his place, he looked at me, his eyes serious. Sarah, he said, holding my hand across the table. I've been doing some thinking. I really like you, more than just a girlfriend. I want us to be a team, you and me. What do you say, will you marry me? His question caught me off guard. Sure, we hadn't been dating for too long, but there was no denying the love I felt for him. So, I said yes. We were over the moon, excited about our future together. But, boy, was I in for a ride. Little did I know that this decision would lead me down a path full of twists and turns. Life took a sudden turn after that dinner. I was now engaged to Ryan, a man I'd met online, who was as kind and caring as he was committed to his mom. The word fiancé had a new, exciting ring to it. We decided it was time to meet his mom, a woman who lived a couple of hours away in a small town. She was the epicenter of Ryan's world, the person whose opinion mattered the most to him. So, the plan was set a weekend trip for the two of us to meet the woman who had raised my soon-to-be husband. The drive was filled with a strange tension. Ryan was visibly nervous, his fingers drumming on the steering wheel, his eyes darting to the rearview mirror more often than necessary. He was a man on edge, and it wasn't hard to guess why. Ryan, I said, trying to soothe his nerves. Relax. I'm sure your mom is a wonderful person. He shot me a half-smile, his eyes still on the road. Yeah, she's, she's something all right. His mom's house was a picture of quaint charm, a small structure that looked like it had jumped straight out of a home and garden magazine. As we pulled up, I saw her waiting for us on the porch, a frail figure with a spark of defiance in her eyes. Ryan, my boy, Margaret exclaimed as soon as we got out of the car, enveloping him in a tight hug. After a moment, she turned to me, her gaze icy, you must be Sarah. I extended a hand, forcing a smile, yes, ma'am. It's a pleasure to meet you. The afternoon was a whirlwind of conversation, a deep dive into Ryan's life and his mom's sacrifices. 
she painted a vivid picture of their shared journey, of the struggles they'd overcome together. It was touching, but also a bit overwhelming. So, Sarah, she said at one point, her eyes boring into me. Ryan tells me you're a nurse. I nodded, yes, ma'am. I work at the city hospital. And your family? She asked, her gaze never wavering. Who do you have? I swallowed, a lump forming in my throat. I, I don't remember my parents. My grandmother raised me. She nodded, her eyes softening a bit. Well, I suppose we all have our crosses to bear. The conversation took a strange turn then. She talked about blessing our marriage, but on one condition. We had to keep sending her the monthly $1,000. I was taken aback. I knew Ryan helped her out, but this felt different. It felt like a transaction. Ma, Ryan said, his voice firm. We're planning to get married, not sign a contract. Margaret shot him a stern look, this is not a negotiation, Ryan. It's what I need. Ryan looked at me, his eyes pleading. It was a tough situation, one that I didn't want to escalate. So, I agreed. I agreed to this bizarre condition, for Ryan's sake. The wedding planning kicked off with a bang. Ryan and I were excited, brimming with ideas and dreams for our big day. We had decided on a simple ceremony, something that reflected our love and commitment, without breaking the bank. After all, we had a significant monthly commitment to Ryan's mom, which kept our budget modest. But love, we believed, didn't need an extravagant show. Our venue was the local church, a charming little structure with an air of warmth and familiarity. Father John, the pastor and a dear friend of Ryan's, was more than willing to officiate our wedding. His twinkling eyes and hearty congratulations made us feel even more special. The guest list was a short one, a handful of work friends, Ryan's childhood buddies, and, of course, his mom. Margaret had a strong presence in our lives, and her involvement in the wedding planning was no different. She was there at every turn, her opinions shaping our choices, from the color scheme to the menu. I think we should serve roast beef, she declared during one of our planning sessions. Ryan loves it. Ryan, ever the dutiful son, nodded in agreement. But mom, he added, Sarah's a vegetarian. We need to consider her too. His mom simply raised an eyebrow. Well, it's your wedding too, isn't it? Ryan didn't argue. He simply agreed and let his mom have her way. I didn't mind much. I was too caught up in the joy of marrying the man I loved. But there was another person who was deeply involved in our wedding planning, my grandmother. She was my rock, my guiding light. She had raised me single-handedly, and her wisdom and strength had always been my inspiration. Grandma was thrilled about the wedding. She helped me pick out a simple but elegant white dress. She baked cookies for the reception, her hands working magic in the kitchen. And she was there, always there, with a smile and a word of encouragement. The day of the wedding was a whirlwind of emotions. I was nervous, excited, and a little overwhelmed. Ryan looked dashing in his blue suit, his eyes sparkling with joy. His mom, in a striking red dress, was the life of the party, chatting and laughing with everyone. The ceremony was a beautiful, heartwarming affair. Father John spoke eloquently about love and commitment, his words resonating with everyone present. As Ryan and I exchanged our vows, I could see tears in Grandma's eyes. It was a moment I would cherish forever. The reception, held in the church hall, was a fun-filled event. The roast beef was a hit, and even though I couldn't partake, I was happy to see everyone enjoying it. Ryan's mom made sure to remind everyone that it was her idea. I didn't mind. I was too caught up in the joy of the day. As the day came to a close, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. We were married. We were starting a new chapter in our lives. I knew there would be challenges, but I was ready to face them. I had Ryan, and I had Grandma. 
I was ready for whatever life had in store for us. In the weeks following our wedding, Ryan and I were on cloud nine. We had moved into a small rented apartment and were slowly settling into our new life together. Our days were filled with love and laughter, and our nights with dreams of a future we were eager to build together. One of our major goals was to save for a down payment on a house. We had a plan, a budget, and a piggy bank that we lovingly called our future home. Every penny we saved was a step closer to our dream. But our financial plan had a significant dent, the $1,000 we sent to Ryan's mom every month. Ryan's mom was a constant presence in our lives, and not always a welcome one. She had a knack for showing up unannounced, often with a list of complaints and demands. Her favorite topic was her financial struggles and how we needed to help her more. One evening, she arrived at our apartment with a stack of papers. Ryan, dear, she began, her voice dripping with sweetness, we need to discuss something. Ryan, ever the obedient son, sat down with her, a look of concern on his face. What is it, mom, he asked. She slid a paper across the table to him. I need you to sign this, she said. It was a contract, a formal agreement that we, all the time we're married, would continue to send her $1,000 every month. But that wasn't all. She also wanted us to cover her her utility bills, and and part of other costs. Ryan was taken aback. Mom, we're already helping you out every month. We can't afford all this, he protested. She simply shrugged. You'll find a way, she said, her voice cold and unfeeling. I was speechless. The audacity of her demand was shocking. But before I could react, Ryan had already signed the contract. He looked at me apologetically. I'm sorry, Sarah, he said. I didn't see this coming. I was seething with anger, not at Ryan, but at his mother. She was exploiting us, and it wasn't fair. This isn't right, I said, my voice trembling with rage. You can't just demand money from us like this. She simply smirked. I just did. The drive home was a silent one. I was too angry, and Ryan was too guilty. Our dream of owning a home seemed to be slipping away, replaced by a growing pile of bills and obligations. Life was a non-stop roller coaster ride with Ryan and his mother. No matter what we did, it felt like we were always under her microscope, and every move we made was met with her disapproval. It was suffocating, and it was starting to eat away at our happiness. The situation reached boiling point one evening when she came over for her usual uninvited visit. Ryan and I had been discussing the possibility of starting a family. We were excited about the idea of bringing a new life into this world. But when I shared our plans with his mother, her reaction was far from supportive. A baby? Are you two nuts? Margaret bellowed, her face turning an alarming shade of red. You can barely keep your heads above water and now you want to add a baby to this circus? I was taken aback by her outburst. We've thought about this, and we believe we're ready, I countered, trying to keep my voice calm. She snorted, ready? You think you're ready? You can't even handle your own lives, and now you want to toss a baby into the mix? I turned to Ryan, hoping he would step in, but he just sat there, his face ashen. His mother's words had struck a nerve, and he seemed lost for words. Instead of thinking about a baby, you should be thinking about me. She continued, her voice rising with each word. I'm not getting any younger. I need you to take care of me, not some snot-nosed brat. I could feel the anger bubbling up inside me. We're not your babysitters, I snapped, my patience wearing thin. We have our own lives to live and we won't let you dictate them. Margaret turned to Ryan, tears welling up in her eyes. Is this how you treat your mother? Is this how you repay me for all I've done for you? Ryan looked at me, then at his mother. I could see the turmoil in his eyes. He was caught between his loyalty to his mother and his love for me. Finally, he spoke up, Mom's right, Sarah, he said, his voice wavering. We're not ready for a baby. 
we have too many responsibilities already. His words were like a punch to the gut. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I turned to him, my eyes filled with disbelief. So, you're taking her side now? He didn't answer, just looked down at his hands. That was all the answer I needed. I got up and stormed out of the room, leaving Ryan and his mother alone. That night, Ryan and I had the biggest argument we've ever had. We yelled, we cried, we said things we didn't mean. But in the end, nothing was resolved. He still sided with his mother, and I was left feeling betrayed and alone. The following weeks were a nightmare. Ryan's mother was more intrusive than ever, and Ryan was more distant. As a result, I just stopped communicating with Margaret, even if it was rude, but not seeing her was already a great achievement. She called me an impudent girl and stopped calling me too. I'd been noticing a change in Ryan for a while. He was always on his phone, his fingers flying across the keyboard as he sent text after text. He was coming home late from work, his excuse always the same, just got caught up at the office, babe. I didn't want to believe anything was wrong. I tried to convince myself that it was just work stress, that he was just busy. But deep down, I knew something was off. My suspicions were confirmed when my best friend, Lisa, called me one evening. Sarah, I don't know how to say this, she began, her voice shaking. I found Ryan's profile on that dating site we used to use. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. What? That's impossible, I stammered, my mind racing. He wouldn't. I'm sorry, Sarah, Lisa said, her voice filled with sympathy. I thought you should know. I hung up the phone, my hands shaking. I felt a wave of nausea wash over me. I didn't want to believe it, but the evidence was right there. When Ryan came home that night, I confronted him. Who is she, Ryan? I demanded, my voice shaking with anger. Who are you texting all the time? Who are you meeting on that dating site? Ryan looked at me, his face pale. I don't know what you're talking about, Sarah, he stammered, his eyes darting around the room. Don't lie to me, Ryan. I yelled, my patience wearing thin. I know about the dating site. I know you're seeing someone else. Ryan didn't say anything for a moment, just stared at me. Then, he let out a sigh. I'm sorry, Sarah, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I didn't want you to find out this way. I felt a surge of anger. So, you admit it? You've been cheating on me? Ryan nodded, his eyes filled with guilt. I'm sorry, Sarah. I didn't mean for this to happen. It just, did. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The man I loved, the man I had planned to start a family with, was cheating on me. And to make matters worse, he wasn't even sorry about it. I want a divorce, Ryan, I said, my voice steady. I can't be with someone I can't trust. Ryan didn't argue, didn't try to convince me to stay. He just nodded, his face a mask of guilt and regret. Six months had passed since my divorce from Ryan, and life was starting to settle into a new rhythm. I was learning to live alone, to be independent. Then, my grandmother passed away. She'd been a rock in my life, a woman of strength and wisdom. Her passing left me with a gaping hole, but also, unexpectedly, a considerable inheritance. She'd left me her old mansion, a beautiful house with vast gardens and rooms filled with antique furniture. And there was also a hefty sum of money, enough to let me live comfortably for the rest of my life. I was shocked, overwhelmed, but also grateful. It was a fresh start, a chance to rebuild my life. Just as I was starting to adjust to this new reality, there was a knock on the door. Standing on my doorstep was none other than Ryan's mother, a woman who'd always been a thorn in my side. Well, look at you, living in luxury, she sneered, looking around the mansion, with greedy eyes. I heard about your little windfall. You must be over the moon. I crossed my arms, raising an eyebrow at her. What do you want, Margaret? 
She put on a saccharine smile, her eyes still scanning the house. Well, dear, I thought it's only fair that since you and my son are married, I should get a share of this fortune. I couldn't help but laugh. Margaret, you're out of the loop. Ryan and I divorced six months ago. Her eyes widened, and she sputtered. What? No, that can't be right. Ryan would have told me. Call him and ask, I suggested, leaning against the doorframe. He'll confirm it. She pulled out her phone, dialed Ryan's number, and put it on speaker. Ryan, tell me it's not true, she demanded when he answered. Tell me you and Sarah are still married. There was a pause, and then Ryan's voice came through, sounding resigned. No, Mom, we're not. We divorced six months ago. Ryan's mom ended the call, her face pale. You've made a fool of me, she said, her voice trembling. And you, Ryan, you're an idiot for letting this gold mine slip through your fingers. With that, she turned on her heel and stormed off, leaving me standing in the doorway, shaking with laughter. It felt good to finally stand up to Margaret, to see her taken down a peg. I'd been through a lot, but I was coming out the other side stronger, more confident. My new life was just beginning, and I was ready for whatever came next. I had a beautiful house, financial security, and most importantly, I was free from the shackles of an unhappy marriage. As I closed the door, I couldn't help but smile. Life was looking up. The sun had already started to set when I heard the knock. I opened the door to find my ex-husband, Ryan, standing there. His sudden appearance was as surprising as it was unwelcome. What the hell are you doing here, Ryan? I asked, my voice laced with annoyance. I, I heard about your inheritance, Sarah, he stammered, his eyes darting around the grand entrance of the mansion. Is it true? I crossed my arms over my chest, raising an eyebrow at him. Yeah, it's true. My grandmother left me her house and a substantial amount of money. What's it to you? Ryan swallowed hard, his gaze never leaving mine. I was thinking, maybe we could give it another shot, Sarah, he said, his voice shaky. I've been a fool. I let my mother dictate our lives. I didn't stand up for you when I should have. I, I want to make it right. A bitter laugh escaped my lips. Oh, now you want to make it right? I asked, shaking my head in disbelief. Now that I'm rich, you suddenly want to be a better man? You think I can't see right through you, Ryan? Ryan looked taken aback by my words, but he quickly composed himself. It's not like that, Sarah, he said, his voice filled with desperation. I... I've changed. I can be a better man. I can. I can make it up to you. I stared at him, my heart pounding in my chest. I could see the greed in his eyes, the dollar signs, practically flashing in his pupils. He was no different from his arrogant mother. He was just after my money. Listen here, Ryan, I said, my voice cold as ice. You had your chance. You blew it. Now, you want to waltz back into my life, because I've come into some money? You're even more pathetic than I thought. Ryan flinched at my words, but he didn't back down. I, I just want to make it right, Sarah, he pleaded, his voice, barely above a whisper. I, I just want another chance. I shook my head, a humorless smile on my face. You're not getting another chance, Ryan, I said, my voice steady. You're not getting a dime of my money. Now get off my property, before I call the cops. With that, I slammed the door in his face, leaving him standing on the doorstep. I could hear him calling out to me, begging for forgiveness, but I ignored him. I had better things to do than listen to his empty promises, and please. I walked away from the door, my heart pounding in my chest. I'd finally stood up to Ryan, to his manipulations and his lies. I'd finally stood up for myself. In the weeks that followed, I found myself thinking about Ryan less and less. I was moving on, slowly but surely. 
I was building a new life for myself, a life that was mine and mine alone. I made new friends, people who liked me for who I was, not for my money or my mansion. I started volunteering at a local animal shelter, finding joy in helping those who couldn't help themselves. I was finally living my life on my own terms, and it felt amazing.